So walk, if you can walk us through just some of the differences of what you were doing from when you were training for JV versus mm -hmm. when you decide, okay, I got to work smarter, not harder here and mm -hmm. start training for the varsity team. What, what were some of the biggest differences there? All right. So one of the biggest differences on JV was um, if you've all, if you've been in a sport for a long time, it's never your first thing to think of, Hey, how should I improve? How, so, how should I be strategic about how I approach this problem? In JV, I just knew that, hey, I had to play soccer, right? Everybody told me, oh, you're just going to play more. You're just going to play more. But nobody told me, hey, this is what you need to train. Um, and whenever I'd go train with some of my teammates, what are they doing? Free kicks. One goalkeeper, everybody's taking shots at a goal keeper and then sometimes we'll play world cup where you kick it up in the air and it's like teams of two and you and your other person are just trying to score on the goalkeeper i think that did help but a lot of times i was alone because nobody wanted to play sure um and then it got to the point where i was like man i'm not improving right so i decided to go to the internet you know i'm low-key nerd so i looked online um there wasn't a lot of resources at the time back in 2012 YouTube was still like a, a new type of ordeal. Um, but uh, over that next year, more people started getting on YouTube. I started, you know, understanding that, hey, some of these things that I watched in that first YouTube video is working. And um, I think I just became more uh, alert in what I needed to do, right? JV, I didn't do a lot of wall passes. I didn't do a lot of um, dribbling through cones, but during that summer to try to make varsity, oh yeah, I was doing a hundred passes on my right foot, hundred passes on my left. Um, and over time, I developed better strategies: pass it to the wall, turn, dribble the other way, come back and pass it, turn with my left foot. So I was just building on top of it. And then yeah. if if I'd play with my friends outside of school or even in a game. Things that I couldn't do, I'd be like, okay, this happened. Why couldn't I achieve this? And uh, that's just how I started breaking it down. And ultimately, I un I started realizing that my touch was the killer. My coach one day told me, uh, when we first started varsity, he's like, hey, man, um, the only thing that's killing is your touch. Every time somebody will pass you the ball, you may need to control, look down, touch, and then finally look up. That's four or five seconds, the pass is gone. So I was like, okay, how to get a good soccer touch? And then that's, you know, I, I was just doing what I was, you know. I somebody, that, bro. Yeah, you yeah. got no coaches, right? At the end of the day, yeah. like, I feel like that's that's the one advantage that so many players, and we'll talk about it in, in a few minutes, right? The, the mm -hmm. whole pay-to-play model. That's the one, you know, um, I would say oh. ad advantage that they yeah. have. You have. They have access to top-level coaching mm -hmm. and training. And you, you're, 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 you're Googling things on the internet and, and on YouTube trying to find mm -hmm. something that's going to allow you to, to get better. I mean, 